Welcome to Rotowire TV. I'm Heather Ankeny, your host. He's the expert, Chris Liss. We're talking all fantasy football today. And I, we were just talking about drafting and our drafts over the weekend. And there's still some preseason games left. This is the first one I think I've ever drafted this early, you know? And we've been losing players. Even Vic went down, I think it was last night, right? Monday Night Football? <clears throat> Once you have your team drafted and you're loaded into the system like we are, is it too early to panic and start <laughs> dropping? I mean, obviously if someone's out for the season in the preseason, okay. But I could just see myself wanting to like start making moves already. And, and I feel like sometimes I do that too early on. When do you, do you just wait for a couple weeks and let it ride? Or what do you think? Well, this problem is going to be with you throughout even the regular season, right? I yes, mean, yes. Like leading into se uh, you know weeks one and two where you just want to like, he's underperforming, he's out. And right. then all of a sudden someone picks him up and he's like, great for the next 14 weeks. Yeah, I, I dropped Miles Austin three years ago after four games of doing nothing. And then from weeks five through 17, he was by far the most productive receiver in the NFL. Sure. And you can't, you know, on a short bench, I had bye weeks. I had to do it. He, you know, there's just no way to know that a guy's going to suddenly break out. Victor Cruz after two weeks, I'm sure a lot of people dropped him. Well, they didn't even have him, actually, in the first place. But, you know, there's always that. But let me just say one thing about the preseason. There's a lot of desperate writers out there who want to get traffic. They want people to pay attention to their Twitter posts. Oh. And they will hype up the preseason like it means a whole lot because it gets attention. They will be like people... Uh, Pitching, pitching somebody, like representing this player, like I'm his agent almost, you know, like, oh my God, Julio Jones and Matt Ryan, they were just so on the same page. They're going to be huge this year. You've got to get them. No, that's just bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. Matt Ryan, let me tell you about Matt Ryan. Okay. He always does well against crappy defenses and he doesn't do well against good defense. Now that may change. He may get better, but... How unsurprising would it be for him to do well in the preseason? Right, I was going to say, doesn't that just sort of make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Here's something about Matt Ryan. He does really well against crappy defenses. <laughs> and so why wouldn't he dominate in the preseason, right? <laughs> so it's like, and then they hype this up like the guy hasn't been in the league four or five years. I mean, the guy's in his like fourth or fifth year. And Julio Jones is, is going to be good, and I really like him. He's extremely explosive. He's big. He's fast. He's kind of like the second best, you know, size-speed combo to Calvin Johnson. And maybe Stephen Hill of the Jets is, but he can't catch yet or run around. I mean, the, and with some polish, he's probably the second most athletic, polished receiver to Calvin Johnson. He's that explosive. Wow, okay. But, I mean, you could argue a couple other guys. AJ Green's there, too. He's not quite as big as Julio Jones. But, but you know, that's great and all, okay? But it doesn't matter that they're doing well in the preseason. And conversely, if your guy who's totally healthy and has a job um, is not doing well in the preseason, don't worry. Or even if your guy's a little banged up and is questionable for a job, but was always questionable for a job, maybe you have Steven Ridley and he hurt his leg, but then he played last night, um, and you're worried he might lose carrot. He might. He might not get the job. He might lose it. He might get hurt, you know, whatever. But for now, he's in exactly the same position he was in when you drafted him. And so don't just chill out. Chill out, you know? And, and if anything, get angry at the <laughs> pundits who are trying to hype different guys and overreact to everything. It's just better if you don't pay attention. Obviously, as you said, if your guy's out for the year, that's, you know, time to cut him and move on. But resist the urge and it's strong sometimes yeah. yeah resist the urge to make moves because you're just over you're micromanaging you're, yeah. you're overdoing it like you you drafted the guy for a reason as long as that reason still persists keep him if, if there's if that reason you know if he got cut if chad ocho cinco you thought yeah. he was going to be the number one guy in the dolphins he's not on the dolphins anymore you know? <laughs> so that's a good reason to cut him yeah that's a good reason to cut him all right cool resist the urge this is rotowire tv